What's going on everyone? In this video, I wanna go over a very effective scalping strategy or breakout strategy that I've been using in the current market. Looking back at my journal and logging all different charts, I've been noticing a common theme. I normally do not trade this way. However, since I've been seeing it day after day, I've been taking advantage of it and I wanna show you all how to capitalize on it as well. So this is gonna be a very good video. I would appreciate it if you could hit that like button and if you want a very good trading resource, I'm going to link my Instagram in the description below. I post daily trading recaps on here, along with very good trading tips and tricks. Link to this will be in the description below. At Investitrade, you're definitely missing out if you aren't following it. So now let's get right into the strategy. This breakout strategy was very effective today with Tesla. Let's first go over the pre-market plan. I post these every single day in my Discord. We had a supply zone at 657 down here where we stalled out on Friday, but we never made a move down. So it really told me that sellers weren't too aggressive in bringing price lower. We were also gapping up inside of the zone. So I wasn't a fan of shorting it. I was just using this supply zone more as a gauge to understand the auction and buyer seller interest and participation in the market. We were watching for a slice through the supply zone and a breakout above the 665.70 area, and gates are open to play calls into the 678.01 supply zone. So here's the chart. We had very strong buying over supply. However, the criteria I wanna go into for this strategy is very simple. It's a breakout strategy. I'm one, I'm always one against playing breakouts. However, I've been seeing it endlessly in this market, and it sucks not being able to capitalize on it. So I've been taking different trades and reacting to what the market's giving me. So this is longing calls, or if you long the stock itself, the equity above supply, only if the following criteria is met. So in all these stocks, all these markets, we have been having very strong bullish moves where we're bouncing out of demand, we have buyer interest, we have strong volume, or we're making all time highs where the market is making higher highs and also making higher lows. So it's very important for you to read the context of the instrument and understand buyer's interest or understand the seller's interest. Now, the second criteria is that we need to have aggressive buyers outweighing those sellers at an existing supply imbalance. So going back to the chart, these supply zones are areas where the supply and demand equation, equation was out of balance at an existing point. I plot the imbalance and I wait for the reaction at the zone. So the case here is just normally you're supposed to play puts at supply if the sellers are reactive to price and we get valid confirmation to play to the downside. However, in this market, if I am seeing more aggressive buyers at an existing supply imbalance, it's telling me buyers are either A, aggressive or sellers are not willing to sell at that price at that existing pink zone or that supply imbalance. So we need to see aggressive buyers hit the market. A good way to do this is price and volume, even looking at the time and sales. And when you look at the time and sales, you wanna see fast orders coming through on the market. You wanna see this thing flashing like crazy and prints coming above the price, um, indicating more participation above that level that we're looking to play a breakout on. So those are the first two points. The third point is probably very key. As long as we don't have supply above or resistance directly above, that's going to skew our risk to reward. All gates are open to rally into the next wall. Now, what I mean by this is going back to the pre-market plan. I said gates are open to play calls into the 678.01 supply zone. As long as we slice through the supply zone, indicating strong buying strength, and we break out above the 665.70 area. So we cannot have supply or resistance or anything that's gonna really be a burden to price where we have a wall of sellers, it cannot be close to that breakout level. In this example, we had Tesla, let's just call it 666. Uh, we'll try to have some good luck here. Um, but this next supply zone was around 678.01. Uh, and if we go to a higher time frame chart, you know, once we got above this supply zone right here at 665 or 666, there was nothing, I call it white space. There was nothing signifying any strength of selling until we got higher about 12 or so points 
into the next supply imbalance at 678.01, which would be the next area where we have a, have a wall of sellers. Um, so now going back to a one minute chart, it's very effective to use on a one minute because you want to do what the market's telling you right now. And it's not necessarily a scalping strategy. It's more of a breakout. But if you're playing breakouts, especially in this market, you want to be fast with your entries and even faster with your exits. I think a one minute will be a perfect fit. So as long as we don't have supply or resistance above, all gates are open to the next into rallying into the next wall. The fourth point is we need strong momentum. We need strong volatility and we need strong volume to confirm it. It's all we need. And this happens in the first five to 10 minutes of the market open. The closer to the opening bell, the better of the trades that I've been seeing. Now, you know, if you came up to me two, three months ago, I completely avoided playing in the open. However, this is something that I've been seeing a lot. And there's no point to not capitalize on crazy moves where the premiums move up, you know, 30, 40, 50% in a matter of, you know, two, three, four, five minutes. Another point I would like to note is if it happens later in the day, I'm not interested in playing this at all. This is more of a thing where the closer to the bell it is, the more risky it is. However, it's more effective. So if you do play this, I personally will play it with smaller size because playing at the open is more of a gamble. This could easily reverse on us. However, it happens fast and it usually will work out right away. That's how I know I'm right on my timing of the entry. If it starts chopping around, there's no volume, there's no volatility, I'm pretty much going to get out. This is something where it happens right away. And if it doesn't work out right away, I'm going to start questioning my position a little bit. So this was my trade on Tesla today. I longed the 670 calls at $13.90 at 9.31, right here where my oval's at. We had very fast volume, very strong movements. Price was moving up. Volume was aggressively moving up as well. Very strong buying pressure. We came above the 665, 70 zone uh, that I mentioned in the pre-market plan. And then this thing rallied. Now, when I am scalping, I'm scalping with decent size. So a pullback, especially playing at the open where the volatility is very high, will destroy my premiums. So I personally, since I do play with higher size, even though I cut my position in half playing at the open, I'm very conservative and protective with my profits. I do not want my premiums to get crushed. So as soon as we pushed up, we got another move up above 672. And as soon as we got above 673, I sold my full premiums at $17.30. It was a quick two minute trade and I made about 25% in two minutes. Nothing wrong with that, right? However, if you were to hold on to this trade, which is acceptable because majority of these moves are all day runners, or they squeeze more juice out of the lemon some point later in the day. As long as you respect your risk, you follow your plan, your plan's predetermined before you enter, you could have held on to this trade. We pulled back into VWAP, we hugged it like a rug, came back up, hugged it like a rug again, and this continued to break out. It came into the final target. I know a lot of members capitalized on this. These contracts went up about 70 or so percent uh, to the high, so there were a lot of more profits to be made. However, I'm never going to complain. I never want to complain about profits that I could have made. Follow my plan. I did what I had to do and I made money off the trade. I focus on the next one. This eventually came into target. So if you did follow the plan perfectly, good scale out right here. And eventually we came above the supply zone, acted like it wasn't there. This now becomes invalid. And pretty much all afternoon, we moved sideways. Another example was last week on Amazon. This was from the pre-market plan as well. We had supply at 3,526 bucks. The key is the reaction at the zone and seeing which participants are winning in the auction. With any trading strategy, your job is to be reactive to the reaction of the participants in the market and being able to read the story that the market is portraying to you and understand the context of the auction. If we slice through the 3526 supply like it's, not, like it's not there, I will be watching to play calls as we could test and break all time high at 3554 today easily. I don't want a short strength either because the context was extremely bullish. So this was all time highs. 3554 was all time highs. We have nothing to gauge above this, so we can't really say, you know, I'm targeting the next supply zone. 
this is a good area to use my take profit strategy. Uh, once we break out, there's nothing to play. Um, so we had the supply zone and essentially was act like a wall and you got, you know, five people holding the wall up. That's the supply zone. If we slice through it and buyers destroy those five people holding that wall up. And once we break all time highs, there's nothing stopping this thing from running. So at the open, you know, very strong volume, very nice candles, clean movement, solid volume down here, solid buying pressure, broke above the 3554 all time highs sliced through that wall like it wasn't there and then this thing continued to rally i remember playing calls on this last week and this essentially was a all-day runner off it so the idea here is to get creative understand to uh read the context and if you see aggressive buyers over sellers at an existing supply imbalance something is wrong to the short side and something's wrong to be a bear so maybe get a little red flag going off in your head and maybe look to be long or be a bull and play it to the long side. As long as we don't have any supply or resistance above, all gates are open to rally. We need strong momentum, strong volume, strong volatility to confirm. And it happens best in the first five to 10 minutes. The closer to the bell, the better. There was another setup two weeks ago on Nvidia. There was another one on Facebook. So it's just conforming your rules, bending them a little bit to the current theme of the market something I think every trader needs to understand and accept in their arsenal. You need to really do what the market's currently telling you and the current chapter that it's reading to you in its book. Uh, so be reactive to it. Understand that this isn't a breakout above, you know, a resistance or, you know, any major level. This is just gauging the auction and playing it when all gates are open to rally into the next zone because the market is very strong. Dips keep getting bought up and rallies keep, fueling moves higher with new demand higher so it's just a crazy market we've been seeing and it's important to capitalize on these different types of setups along with pullbacks into demand as well you know there's setups all the time just get creative with it um, look for the highest quality of setups make sure you have volume and price to back it up and confirm it and on that note i'm gonna end the video if you enjoyed it you learned something from it i would really appreciate it if you could just hit that thumbs up button for me subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram. And if you truly want to learn more, check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course that will come with access to the Discord at no extra cost. Prices will not be this cheap for much longer. But besides that, I'm gonna end it, peace.